Well, if you study the business cycle, you, you notice that it's really a set series of chronological sequences. We've heard about the leading indicators, the coincident and the lagging indicators. Well, there are actually hundreds of different events that form and during the course of the business cycle. And the turning points of bonds, stocks and commodities are six of those turning points. And there's a definite sequence to bonds bottoming and then stocks and then commodities and then bonds peaking and then stocks and then commodities, which gives us three markets and two tops, oh, sorry, two turning points for each market. So three twos are six, which gives us six stages, just like the calendar year has four seasons. So the stock market, so the business cycle has six stages. And if you can identify those stages, which we do with uh, our barometers and models, then you can figure out what's the best asset allocation for each stage in the cycle. So at the beginning of the cycle, you want to be involved as you're coming into a recession with interest sensitive stocks and with bonds. And towards the end of the cycle, you want to avoid that stuff and get into energy and mining and commodities, because that's the stuff that does better at the end of the cycle. And then that causes tremendous inflation, interest rates go up, cycle comes back and starts again. So what would be the extra trigger point to that we enter from stage two to phase three? Because you said ah. officially you are not bullish on commodities, but you are still bullish. So what would be the well, trigger here? We, we're currently in stage two. Stage one starts off when bonds are bullish. Stage two is when stocks become bullish and commodities are bearish. And that's where we are right now. So the next stage will be when commodities become bullish, that's when everything goes up together, and we're seeing a move towards that. We're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. the, our commodity barometer has to get to 50%, it's currently at 37, mm -hmm. having come up from zero. So I think in a couple of months, you'll find that commodities are bullish. Mm -hmm. So tell us a few words about your new book. New, new book is called Investing in the Second Lost Decade, and it's really pointing out that we had a lost decade where people lost <laughs> money in the stock market, they bought it in 2000, held it to today. We're saying we don't see the kind of conditions that we want to see to call the end of that secular bear market in stocks. So we think there's another five to 10 years of another lost decade uh, ahead of us. And the book also tells you how to invest during the course of that decade because even though the basic trend is down, there are pockets of opportunity to buy stocks in that, in, in, um, during a secular bear market. And that's where the business cycle analysis comes in. So, just my last question. The, your first impression of the city, the people, and because you have been here a quite long time ago, and you know, fresh impression. <laughs> well, I first came to Budapest in 1963 uh, when I was a student, and we were on a big camping expedition going to uh, Istanbul. So I, I was in Budapest for about eight hours uh, in, that, in that period. So uh, coming back today is a wonderful revelation because I've seen a lot more things and uh, it's a very beautiful city and uh, I'm really enjoying it very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for this invitation for this prestigious event, um, a truly distinguished um, number of panels. Um, you know, as, uh, going back to your question, as far as my presentation was concerned, uh, it was just a very short summary uh, of um, a five-part presentation called Path to Professional Trading, which tackles the issue of people that would like to trade for a living. What are the four stages of competency or the, that they have to go through and what are the 10 associated uh, challenges, if you, if you wish, within these four, uh, four stages. Um, so, for example, beginning from stage one, which is unconscious incompetence, which means that someone is not aware that they, um, they, they don't know, uh, which represents around, from some official statistics that uh, we found, is around 40% of the market. Uh, then they proceed to uh, conscious incompetence, which means they just they come to the point where they admit that they don't know. Um, they come, realize, come to terms that they're losing for a purpose, and that purpose is focused on them, not some uh, uh, the markets or the regulators or high frequency trading or whatever other reason. Um, if they, um, they, at this stage, they usually take some technical analysis course to enhance their knowledge and um, uh, learn a bit about the basics of price movement. Um, after a while, they still have realized that this is still not enough. So, uh, because technical analysis is like a, is learning the, the ingredients, for example, the flour, the butter, and the milk. 
However, they realize that the learning degree this is not enough. They take it to the next level, which is level C. And that level is uh, conscious competence. But in order to lead to that, they have to take some advanced technical analysis course, like trading strategies. The difference between technical analysis and technical strategies is technical analysis is like learning the um, ingredients. Technical trading is like learning a recipe, how you can combine these, how you can put them, formulate them into a trading strategy. So after they've done that, they have implemented enough uh, because, of course, as we all know, uh, learning uh, a recipe does not make you a chef. So after they have implemented and practiced it enough, then they go to the next level, which is that of conscious competence. They're deliberate about what they do. Um, however, they still face a lot of um, uh, challenges in, these, um, uh, in, um, in this particular level of knowledge, which is if they manage to overcome, they lead the fourth stage, um, which is the unconscious competence, which are they're very quiet um, unconscious of what they're doing, they've reached such a level of expertise where they've internalized their process so much it's difficult for them to even explain. Um, they still face some problems in this one, for example, system degradation. They use strategies where they're robust and they have practiced successfully enough but they just go out of sync with the market at some, or they face psychological um, problems in their psychology. Uh, that's a very condensed version of what's, uh, you know, what the, the fourth stage of someone has to go to this from going um, not very uh, knowledgeable of the markets to being uh, uh, an expert. So how long would it take to go from a, from point A to point B on average for a, for a private investor? <laughs> uh, it would take, for example, um, I'll just borrow the expression of uh, Linda Rashke. She, she mentioned that um, if someone wants to become a, a trader, if they're smart, it will take him, them, uh, five years. If they're really smart, it will take them around ten. Uh, however, I try to put it in, not in terms of time, but I, because you don't know how much time you've put in that, uh, how much effort you put in your allocated time, but try to have some effort. So I would say probably you need around two to three thousand supervised round trip trades in terms of like having a, a very concrete uh, trading plan, reviewing your performance afterwards, going through the whole process, and having enough number of observations to see what's going on. So I would say probably like two or three thousand trades uh, under your belt. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me.